Good day wherever you're watching us from. It's a chilly, chilly day here in Kiambu County. And today we are going to look at the impact of drought on food security. You see, when we talk about food security, we are looking at livestock production and crop production. And as it's well known, Kiambu is one of the leading producers of milk and especially the Bongori constituency. And that is where we are. In particular, we are in Gadaibi, where we are looking at the impact of drought on livestock production. And when we talk about livestock production, we are looking at milk production. Did you know that Kenya is the second producer of milk in Africa? That is after Ethiopia. And therefore, it means that the ongoing drought that has been happening for the last solid years has affected farming in a big way. And because you'd like to understand how it has affected farmers, we are joined or we have visited the farmer, uh, one of the farmers in Gedongori, in Gadaibi. Her name is Esther. She will introduce herself. We will look at what she's doing in terms of milk production. She will tell us how the drought has affected her production, her income, what she does every day, so that we can be able to analyze and see how farmers have been affected by drought and what our government and various stakeholders can do in able to support farming and continue ensuring that we have food production in our country. Thank you so much. My name is Rose Gishure. Remember, this is EnviroCare Global Show that comes to you and gives you all the information that you need to understand and hear, especially on matters uh, that pertains environmental conservation. Okay, Asante. Na nimefurai sana. Niko upade wa gatha hivi na mimi ni mkulima. Vile tunalima hapa, ukulima umerudi chini. Kama vile mimi nilianza ukulima 20, 21 years now. Wow. Eh, Umekua ukifanya ukulima wa ngombe? Eh, wa ngombe. Okay. Eh. Sasa kuna mabo mingi imetudhuru hapa. Kama magojwa, maziwa kurudi chini, chakura kupanda, hivyo mm. hivyo. Okay. Eh. Okay. Na katika hiyo experience yako, hmm. una wakati ukulima wa maziwa ni mzuri, unakuwa na hiyo season ambayo ni mzuri, unapata pesa mzuri, chakula haina bei kali, hakuna hicho kiangazi, hakuna hayo magonjwa ambayo yanakuja kwa ajili ya kiangazi, alafu mambo yanabadilika. Siwezi ukasema kunayo hmm. kwa sababu wakati mwingine maziwa hakuna wakati inakuwa imepanda ati umekulia vile umelima hapana ah, okay. eh. vile mnanunuliwa maziwa eh, vile tunanunua maziwa ni chini chakula imepanda bakery uwezi ukanunua sasa so, zingine hata wakulima wengine wanakataa kulisha ngombe eh. Eh. kwa sababu hawana hayo mapato si ndio eh. na wakati chakula cha ngombe kimepanda bei eh. kwa juu mnaambiwa inapanda juu kwa nini ni kwa sababu hicho chakula hakuna kwa sababu ya kiangazi ama kwa ajili hiyo chakula maybe inatolewa inchi zingine kwa sababu Kenya for now kumekuwa na hiyo kiangazi ambayo hai support chakula ku, ku, kulimwa ni vile wakulima wa limi siku hizi tunaambua mazao yamerudi chini sasa kuna chakula la ngombe lazima ipa mm. ipande mm. saa zingine wanasema inatolewa inchi za nje yeah. eh. okay eh. na inchi hizi za nje ni kama gani kama huko Tanzania, uh -huh. Ethiopia uko. Ah okay. Eh. Kwa hivyo au wakileta chakula chao kutoka nchi cost yao inakuwa iko juu. Ju. Kwa hivyo wakifika hapa hiyo cost wanapelekea mkulima. Eh. Kumaanisha kama wangeweza kuproduce huku Kenya kwa hivyo price ya chakula ingerudi chini Ngerudi na wewe kama mkulima unapondonua unapata hiyo mm. uh, benefit yako. Si ndio. Eh. Eh. Alafu tuelezee tunaona uko na ngombe mzuri sana hapa. In fact nimekuwa nikiangalia hizi ngombe na sema Mungu anapenda gedhongori sana kwa sababu ni ngombe mzuri tuelezee unakamua ngombe ngapi na umekuwa ukikamua hizi ngombe kwa muda upi nimekamua ya nakamua sahi nakamua ngombe nne okay. na zingine ziko dry na dama bili ziko pare okay. na nimekamua kwa miaka 20 sasa okay eh. Eh hizi ngombe zako umekuwa nazo kwa muda gani hizi zenye tunaona hapa sasa hii hii iko na almost 10 years ah okay eh sasa naweza nikishariza eh mwenyewe eh alikuwa hapa kuna ngombe ya kununua naenda nazaliza ikizeeka nauza eh naleta hiyo nyingine okay hebu tuelezee hapo mbeleni ulituambia ulikuwa na ngombe mingi na kuna kitu kilifanyika 
na sasa umebakisha hizi ngombe chache hebu tuelezee hayo mambo yamekuwa aje ni nini kilifanyika ndio ukapoteza ngombe wako wakati kiangazi inaingia mm-hmm. ngombe zinakuwa na magonjwa mingi sana mm-hmm. kama wakati huo ugonjwa wa foot and mouth iliingia okay. na ikadhuri ngombe karibu zote ni mwaka na, huu ama mwaka jana last year okay. eh. Eh. na ngombe zilikojeka zote mm-hmm. nikapoteza zingine eh. sasa dio zimerudi chini maziwa ikarudi chini hakuna maziwa kama ngombe moja unakamua unakamua kikombe moja ngombe ilikuwa inatoa 10 liters unakamua mm. kikombe kimoja. Mm. Eh sasa hiyo ugonjwa ilituzuru sana hiyo ya foot and mouth. Okay. Eh. Na ndio ikakuwa fake tukajipata uko na ngombe chache. Si ndio. Uh-huh. Mm. You see apart from drought affecting directly the production of milk, drought comes with diseases, it comes with pests for those who are producing uh they actually growing crops and this is a farmer that is experiencing the impact of drought in all fronts it does not only affect health it affects production it affects our economies in a larger scale because if a farmer like this one is not able to produce milk the way she's supposed to it means even the supply of milk uh, goes down we experienced that uh, in a few months time where we didn't have the supply of milk in our supply chain and that is what happens to our economy when we have or when we experience a drought so going forward according to wewe ni nini inaweza fanyika ili iweze kusaidia wakulima ukiangalia unaweza ongelelea chakula cha ambacho mnanunua vile mnanunuliwa maziwa mm. na hata ngombe zenu venye zinatibiwa ni nini inaweza fanyika ili wakulima waweze kusaidiwa mm, chakula irudi chini ndio mm-hmm. mkulima apate kitu sasa sometimes watoto hata wanashidwa kulipiwa shule. Sababu mm-hmm. so, maziwa imerudi chini hakuna pesa. Mm-hmm. Eh. Okay. Hebu mm-hmm. tuelezee kwa kifupi mm-hmm. ni chakula gani ngombe wako wanakula. Utuelezee unanunua kama ni hizo daily meal. Eh, daily meal unanunua kiasi gani? Inakula kwa muda gani? Unanunua pesa ngapi? Ndio tuweze kuingiza hiyo economy ambayo unaongea unasema imekuwa bei kali. Sasa kama wiki mbili na wiki moja nanunua daily bill Brain sita mm-hmm. Miss Jam sita hizo ni gunia ni gunia uh-huh. sasa hiyo mm-hmm. ni ya wiki moja peke yake peke yake uh-huh. na hii daily moja inatoka almost 3000 now okay eh uh-huh. sasa hiyo ni kama wiki moja zinakula 20 something unaona uh-huh. eh sababu mimi saa hii mm-hmm. inatoka 2000 Okay. Hey. Miss Jam. Miss Jam. Mm. Mm. Okay. Na according to wewe hiyo ni bei kali. Ni bei kali sana. Miaka miwili ama mitatu ambayo imepita, mlikuwa mnanunua na pesa ngapi? Ka kama nini daily kama meal. Mi, wacha tuseme Miss Jam. Miss Jam. Miss mm-hmm. Jam ilikuwa 900 hapo. Mm-hmm. Hey. Kwa hivyo imeongezeka na kiwango cha juu sana. 100% plus. Hey. Uh-huh. Mm. Which is really painful na at the same time hivyo ndio mnanuliwa maziwa mmeongezewa bei ya maziwa maradufu ama bei ya maziwa imebaki imebaki vina sometimes inarudi chini eh so kama mkulima unaweza kujinua aje wakati unanunua chakula na hiyo bei lakini maziwa inanuliwa na bei kidogo how are you able to balance the math unajifinyilia tu eh ndio upate nini hiyo chakula ya ngombe na uweze kusomesa watoto kidogo kidogo tu lakini hii ngombe tunaweka hapa kama asset sasa hii hakuna kitu inaleta. Mm. Eh. Okay. Eh. Na ngombe moja kama huyu ambaye umesema kwa siku ana produce uh, up to 32 liters of milk. Ukitaka kuuza saa hii mtu mm. akuje ama mimi hapa nikiwa hapa ni sema nataka kununua na unafikiria kuuza. Eh. Unaweza uza kama pesa ngapi? Kama 150 hivi. Eh. Hiyo eh. ni 150. Mm. 1000 150000 Kenya yeah. shillings Kenya shillings okay yeah. maanisha venye umesema ni kama asset mm. kwa ukweli ni asset mm. but you know if an asset can be affected by health issues yes. again that is a risky <laughs> thing mm. but not to say that uh, dairy farming is a loss no umetuelezea kwamba umepata changamoto kadha wa kadha ambazo zimefanya maybe production yako irudi chini mm. na nilikuwa nafikiria kwa nini haujafanya insurance ama kuinsure ngombe zako ili wakati tunapata kiangazi ama tunapata hayo magonjwa unaweza kupata pesa mbadala wakati ngombe zako zinakufa ama zina affectiwa hivyo kwa nini haujafanya insurance nitafanya insurance kwa sababu hiyo ilikuwa bei ya juu sana kama ngombe moja ni 5k sasa ukiwa na ngombe kumi 
kwa muda gani? <laughs> <laughs> Siku mwaka. Oh, kwa mwaka. Eh. Okay. Mm. Ndio maana unasikia hiyo eh. ni pesa mingi. Pesa mingi. Na uko na marafiki ambao wamefanya insurance na experience yao ni gani? Usijapata. Ha, ujapata. Eh. Kwa hivyo watu wengi hawaoni kama eh. ni kitu ambacho kinaweza saidia. Kinaweza saidia. Eh. Na je, mkiletewa insurance sababu iko chini? kwa mfano mm. ngombe umeongea ngombe yako ni 150000 eh. uletewe kama insurance ambayo unalipa kwa mwaka maybe 2500 mm. si unaona hapo kuna faida kwa sababu ukiangalia asset yako iko juu lakini you are able to insure at a very small uh, fee kiwa ngombe moja ni 150 mm. ngombe kumi ni 1.5 million so 50000 kwa 1.5 million unaona wewe ndio utafaidika kwa sababu kenye kinaendelea pia ni hii kiangazi imeanza kukua ni kitu ambacho kinajirudia hey. na ni kitu ambacho si binadamu tusipotenda kitu ili tuweze ku avoid tutajipata pia sisi tuko mashakani na interesting enough we are experiencing severe drought in Ethiopia remember that's the leading producing country in milk Kenya Somalia you know the countries in eastern africa are the most uh, suffering in these uh, desertification and drought issues therefore it means we need to take measures that can be able to protect our farmers one of the measure is insurance but the uptake of insurance uh, within the farming community is not there because maybe they feel it's a lot of money or they feel it won't really be there and from her experience Esther anatuambia kwamba yeye hajakutana na mkulima mwenzake ambayo ame, ambaye amefanya insurance na amesaidika na hiyo insurance kwa hivyo hata yeye mambo ya insurance haielewi sana nasema ya kwamba hiyo 50k hauwezi ipata kwa mara moja na Sindio. maziwa unalipwa pesa kidogo pesa kidogo eh. lakini ukipata insurance ambayo ina introduce maybe wanasema lipa kidogo kidogo by the end of the year utakuwa umemaliza hiyo 50000 eh. how would you take it considering eh. risk kuna risk kwa ngombe zako eh. ukipata kiangazi unapata kama hiyo ugonjwa wa foot and mouth umekuja umemaliza kama ngombe zako sita wewe unaweza ichukua aje naweza ichukua kama wakilipisha bei kidogo kidogo mimi mm-hmm. naweza ichukua ah. eh. okay Yeah the farmer is very willing to continue with her farming which of course is a source of her livelihood and many other people uh, within this uh, constituency of Gedongori and even in Kenya at large so if we have measures that can subsidize farmers support farmers farmers are very willing so that we are able to adopt and even adapt to the changes in our climatical uh, uh, climate change which is affecting our farmers We come to the end of our episode on drought and today as I told you we were looking at drought the impact of drought on the farming communities in Africa and we narrowed down to milk production in Gebongori being the largest uh, producing region in our African region we had to focus and understand how does drought affect the farming communities and remember that drought when it affects food security it affects crop production and livestock production and today we are focusing on livestock production remember to follow us on our twitter account that is envirocare media services on our facebook page envirocare media services linkedin at envirocare media services and on our youtube channel which is displayed here please subscribe and even so that you are able to get notifications whenever we upload a new episode thank you my name is rose gishure this is the envirocare global show